Umbrella can provide a rich set of information about any host or domain. Let's test the Internet Bad Guys site using the Investigate API. On the main dashboard, click Investigate from the main menu. This opens a new browser tab to investigate.umbrella.com. Using the web UI, you can type in various strings into this box to learn how Investigate works. Let's type www.internetbadguys.com and click the Investigate button as a quick test. We won't scrub the data here, but there is a ton of information returned. This site is clearly malicious, but we want to collect these details using the API. To begin, click Investigate API Access on the left. My account doesn't have any access tokens yet, so click Create New Token. Give the token a name, and I'll use InvDemo for Investigate Demo. Click Create once you're satisfied. Now we have an access token for authentication, and I'll copy that into my clipboard. Let's head to the dev box to review some Python code. The last SDK to review is named Cisco Umbrella Investigate.py, so let's dive in. As always, let's import the Cisco Endpoint Base class, then inherit from it when building the Cisco Umbrella Investigate class, giving us access to the core logic common to all endpoint security products. We'll pass in the API key to the constructor, which behaves a bit differently than the other constructors we've explored so far. We'll first call super and pass in the generic base URL, and then we'll update the headers dictionary by adding a new authorization key. The value will be the string of bearer followed by the API key. The final headers dictionary looks like this, keeping in mind the base class already set the accept header to application JSON. The general rec function takes in a resource string and variable keyword arguments, but doesn't do anything fancy. Unlike all the other endpoint security APIs, there is no query parameter merging logic or explicit HTTP basic auth parameter inclusion. The base rec method already passes in the headers attribute, which we updated in the constructor. Therefore, let's just call the base rec method, passing in the resource and keyword arguments, and returning the HTTP body data if it exists. Last, much like the enforcement API, there is only one environment variable being consumed. We'll load in the value for that variable, unpack it, and pass it into the Cisco Umbrella Investigate constructor to instantiate a new object. Next, let's explore the investigate domain.py script. This script is kind of like the ThreatGrid sample submission script because it writes detailed output files to disk in JSON format. To do that, we'll need to import both the OS and JSON libraries. This script takes in one CLI argument that indicates the entity to investigate, so the sys module is needed. Let's also import the SDK class we just reviewed. I've specified a global constant named outdir that identifies the directory name to house the output files, which we'll create later. The main function takes in a site to check, but the word site is oversimplified. Investigate can check domains, host names, URLs, BGP AS numbers, and more depending on the specific request. I'm just calling it site for brevity. Let's print a status message just to confirm the entity under investigation before continuing. Then we'll create the output directory. This is where all the JSON output files will be written, which contains the same data we briefly reviewed in the web UI. The Investigate API has at least 20 different GET requests to collect information, so let's focus on four just to illustrate the capabilities. I'll explain what these are when we review the outputs where they'll be easier to understand. Notice this is a dictionary, not a list. The key represents the file name and the value represents the API resource to query. Let's unpack that dictionary for iteration using the dict.items function allowing us to step over the keys and values in parallel. We'll issue a GET request to the Umbrella Investigate API for each resource, storing the result in the details variable. Then, we'll assemble the output file string by combining the output directory, file name, and the .json file extension. At this point, we have the HTTP response data and out file, so let's open a handle to that file for writing. 
we'll dump in the JSON data, then print a status message indicating that the file was just written. We should see four of these status messages, one for each resource we collected. As we've seen many times, let's ensure there are at least two command line arguments, and if not, we'll print usage instructions and exit. Otherwise, let's extract the first argument and pass it into the main function, which represents the entity to investigate. We can run the script using the Python command shown, then supplying the site to check. Let's use the known malicious site of www.internetbadguys.com. The line wrap makes it hard to see, but there are four lines of output, one for each batch of data stored. We also see a fifth line at the top to confirm the hostname that we just investigated. Let's confirm the files were created inside of the domain details directory. As expected, the script created four new files. I'll open all four at once so we can quickly review their contents. First, we have the categorization file. You might remember this from the reporting API, but Umbrella categorizes each domain it sees. This particular domain is known to engage in malware and phishing activities, and content-wise, is classified as a computer security provider. The co-occurrences file is kind of boring for this particular domain. According to Umbrella's documentation, a co-occurrence is when two domain names are visited within rapid succession of each other. This can reveal interconnections across domains being looked up by the same client. This particular site did not exhibit any co-occurrences, which is generally a good thing. Next, we have the core DNS details. At the top, we see the resource record to which the hostname is mapped. Moving down, we can see even more details to include information about the DNS time to live and location information. For example, this website is hosted from one location at the coordinates shown. These are probably bogus, as this particular location is in the dead center of the continental U.S., a little bit west of Wichita, Kansas, in the middle of a lake. Either way, I think you understand why this might be valuable. The last file contains the geographical details with respect to accessing the domain. This file is more than 600 lines long, but let's quickly skim the geodiversity list. This contains a list of countries using two-letter codes with a measurement of how frequently this site is visited around the world. Roughly 81.5% of the traffic comes from the U.S., with just under 6% coming from Canada. Again, I think you get the idea, as this provides a rough overview of worldwide traffic trends for a given entity. Maybe you'd want to graph this information in a security telemetry collection station for future analysis. I'd encourage you to explore the other Umbrella Investigate API requests and their responses so you can perform your own threat hunting based on your business needs.